Hello everyone, I'm Em, welcome back to Tech Block. Today we're doing part two of the uh, Fixing My PC Build series, I guess. This time, uh, this is going to involve the community here on Tech Block. So I asked you guys to give me suggestions and solutions on how I can go ahead and resolve this USB problem. So I've gone ahead and gathered and screenshotted like 70 of your solutions, I guess. So let's go ahead and read some of the wonderful suggestions that people have given me. So, uh, Jack here says, Hey, the reason it is boot cycling is that all the USB ports, monitors, and RGB connectors take a lot of power. So does your PC while booting up. So that causes the PC to not boot. You need a larger power supply. Uh, the power supply in this PC is uh, a 1050 watt GameMax RGB power supply and uh, I can change colors and stuff. It's a cool power supply, 1050 watts. I don't think I need a, a higher wattage than that, especially for a PC running a GTX 970 and uh, an, an i7 4770 CPU that can't even be overclocked. So uh, yeah, I don't think the components inside here draw much power. Let's go ahead and check out another comment. Uh, Callum here says, I heard giving your PC a buff helps out. Your PC needs to be sparkly clean. So Callum here is suggesting that we, uh, we give the PC a bath. Um, this isn't good advice so far. Uh, buy a much higher wattage power supply. No, <laughs> I don't need more watts. The power supply is fine in terms of wattage, but in terms of all the other things that might be wrong with it, I don't know. Uh, I haven't tested that out yet. Uh, have you tried restarting? So have I tried restarting the PC? Well, uh, I can show you now. I can give you a live demo. If we restart the PC, uh, you can probably just see there it is restarting. Uh, restarting the PC uh, is no problem at all. Uh, it's only when I shut down and attempt to boot up by pressing the power button there, that's when I run into problems. So restarting, not a problem. You'll see the PC boot up uh, right behind me in just a second. We have another comment here. Uh, Jamie also lags says, your computer is telling you not to use RGB. Yep, we have too many RGB fans in here, too many LED strips. Uh, the PC just power cycles because of that. Ghost Eclipse, many too much RGB. Once again, we have too much RGB in this PC. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe you have so many RGB lights and four monitors that probably your motherboard or your power supply can't handle all of them. Maybe you just need the upgrade earlier. Um, the monitors aren't powered by your PC power supply. The monitors have their own power supply. Yeah, we do have a lot of like RGB lights in here, uh, including, you know, this NZXT LED strip here. So during the process of me like, you know, diagnosing this, if it is a hardware problem, I will uh, disconnect NZXT's LED strips and NZXT Smart Hub entirely and see if that fixes the problem, but I kind of doubt it will. Um, we have Mr. Riptide here calling me um, a dumb F <laughs> with PCs. Uh, I never claimed I'm like a genius when it comes to PCs. Thanks for the feedback, dude. Joby Matthew here says, why don't you buy a latest printer and Windows console controller? And you know the latest models in 2018, 2019 and uh, 2020. Yep. I don't know how a latest printer or Windows console controller is gonna, what, what is a Windows console controller? I don't, I don't know what that is. Moving on, we have a Sinful. I think you are under the required minimum for RGB. Once you add more, it should be fixed. We need more RGB. The, <laughs> the only way to fix this problem is to add more RGB. I think the problem is, is that there's not enough RGB at the back of the PC here. That's the problem, surely. We have Ninja here, not the real Ninja, unfortunately. Uh, just buy some medicine with RGB in it, you know, we're gonna give the PC some RGB medicine. Raza here says, just never turn off the PC, man. Um, I wish I could do that, but uh, the fans are loud, the LED strips are bright, and I sleep in the same room as this PC. So if I don't turn it off, man, uh, my room is just going to be like a disco all night, as all the RGB lights will be flashing away and stuff, and the fans will be, you know, spinning away, making noise. I won't be able to sleep if this thing is on. Uh, did you have this problem before the BenQ monitor? I don't think the 4K BenQ monitor has anything to do with uh, this problem here. It's a monitor. Have you tried slapping it with the TV remote? That usually works. What? I think it's because you have way too many USB items connected. Well, in part one, uh, you guys did see me plug in a single USB device. If one USB device, that being my mouse, is too many, then what the hell? Um, okay, we have, uh, we have this guy. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but uh, I think motherboard is problem. But try to remove CPU and lick it. By the way, for anyone with AMD, lick the socket instead of the CPU. That's great advice here, great advice here. There we go, problem solved, problem solved. 
uh, we have Unreal Way. He says, your PSU died because you have a lot of RGB connectors, a lot of monitors, and a lot of USB devices. Hashtag calculator, PSU, power you need. I, I, I don't, I really don't know. I don't know. Uh, we have Andrew here. Says, that, have, you, <laughs> have you tried putting it in rice? How am I going to dip this PC in rice? Uh, it's not water damaged. <laughs> rice isn't going to help us here. Right, so they were pretty much all just like funny comments, I guess. Uh, now, uh, a lot of you did actually give me real suggestions, real solutions on how I can go about fixing this PC. So uh, thank you to everyone who left comments in the previous episode. Let's go ahead and actually like address some of these solutions, I guess, or, you know, try them out ourselves. So a lot of the comments were about the boot order on this motherboard. And uh, I do want to actually hop into BIOS and show you guys uh, that the boot order is absolutely fine. Uh, I've only got one device in the actual like boot sequence and that is my OS SSD. So it should be all good. It really should not be a boot sequence problem. And uh, there's nothing trying to boot up from the USB drives, I think. Right, so I'm in the BIOS right now. And uh, as you all can see, uh, the BIOS version is currently F7, the latest version currently available on this motherboard. And apart from that, uh, let's hop into uh, the actual uh, BIOS features and uh, boot option priority. So, uh, taking a look at our like boot sequence, I suppose, we have one device. That is my Samsung SSD 860 EVO 500 gig. Uh, yeah, that is the only device in the boot sequence here. Everything else, as you can see, is disabled. Everything is disabled except from my OS SSD. And then if we hop onto save and exit, you can see the boot override is only my OS SSD. Nothing else. It's probably not a boot sequence problem. Another possible solution that was suggested a few times was to uh, either clear CMOS, update the BIOS, or uh, reset the BIOS back to its like default state, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load optimized defaults on the BIOS, and uh, hopefully that'll kind of you know reset it to default. Uh, if that doesn't work, I will then clear the CMOS and see if that does the trick, but it probably won't, I guess. One thing I want to mention though, before we load the optimized defaults for the BIOS, is that my memory is currently overclocked to 2133 MHz, and I've enabled an XMP profile for that. So uh, yeah, just so you know, that will be reset back down to 1600, so that might possibly fix the problem if it is like a faulty memory configuration. But regardless, let's go ahead and load the optimized defaults in BIOS. There we go. Uh, and uh, adjust our boot options again so, so that they're all correct. There we go, P3 Samsung SSD 860 EVO 500 gig should be our only option, and that is the case. If we hop back onto advanced memory settings, you can see that XMP has been disabled and the system memory multiplier has been set to 16 or 1600 MHz. So, so we'll save this configuration and uh, yeah, we'll see if this fixes it. All right, so I'm gonna plug in one device. This time this will be a keyboard. I'm going to plug it into one of the USB 2.0 ports right there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to power it up now that we've reset the BIOS or, you know, at least loaded the optimized defaults. So kind of reset it, I guess. So... What? So you're confused. Look, wait, is the keyboard actually plugged in? Will it power on? Oh my God. I'm so confused because it did this yesterday. It booted up with a USB device. Right, I'm shutting it down. Let's see if we can replicate it. So, I have not unplugged the keyboard. How did it just boot up? If it boots up again, then clearly it's fixed. But will it boot up again just fine? What? I'm so con... Well, <laughs> I'm only just getting started with all these solutions. It's booting up with the keyboard. Okay. <laughs> I'm so confused now since... We were able to replicate this twice. So I'm gonna plug in the keyboard's second USB connector into another USB 2.0 port right beside the one that's been working now. So we're gonna try boot the PC up with two ports now. Oh, hell no. No way have I fixed this already. Two USB ports and it's booting up. I'm so confused. One thing I should mention if we have indeed actually solved this is that Two hours ago, I did record this video already, but uh, the audio didn't record. So I'm basically having to re-record the video now. And uh, in the first recording of this video, I went through a lot of the suggestions. I loaded the optimized defaults. I cleared CMOS. I did fast boot. I did ultra fast boot. I disabled fast boot. We did all sorts of like USB configuration and USB support in the BIOS, and nothing worked. But now that I'm having to re-record this video, I loaded optimized defaults. We checked out the boot order, 
and now it's somehow booting up. Let's try this again. Okay, two USB ports, and it boots up. With my key, my keyboard is plugged in, and it's booting up. What? Right, so I've learned one thing so far, I guess. As I don't know if this is actually fixed, but these two USB ports for my keyboard seem to be working fine. I'm able to have these two plugged in, and the PC still boots up. What happens if I try to plug in my mouse? All right, so now three USB ports. Oh, is it the mouse? Is the mouse at fault here? Because the keyboard works. Or at least those two ports work. Could there still be a power supply problem with like the five volt rail? All right, so I know that these two ports here work. I'm gonna try plug in the mouse into one of the two working USB ports and see if we can boot up. If not, this may be a problem with my mouse. Yeah, this may be a problem with the mouse. What I want to try to do is I've plugged in a USB extension cable into a four port USB hub from Anchor. So I'm going to try to see if we can boot the PC up with the extension hub plugged into the back of the motherboard into the same USB ports that were working fine with the keyboard. Uh, so let's see if this works. Yes, the PC is booting up. The Anchor hub is powered. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my mouse into the four port USB anchor hub that's stuck onto the bottom of my table here. And I'm gonna to try to see if we can somehow bypass this problem by plugging in the mouse into a USB expansion hub instead of the back of the motherboard directly. So, no. What the heck? Freaking mouse, man. By the looks of things, there's probably something wrong with that mouse. So I've got myself another Razer mouse here. We're gonna plug it into the same USB port and uh, see if we can boot up with this mouse instead. If we can, then it's probably down to that being at fault here. So three, two, one, there we go. The PC is booting up with this mouse now. <laughs> As I almost dropped the mouse. Yeah, it's on, it's working. All right, so I guess we've pretty much narrowed down to the culprit here. And that's the Razer Mamba Hyperflux mouse. But what I can do to, I guess, bypass this problem is uh, I've got this four port uh, PCIe like expansion card for USB ports. So based on what happened yesterday, if I plug the mouse into this instead of my motherboard, everything should be fine, right? So I'm gonna plug this back in, power it up, plug the mouse into here and see if this fixes the problem. Okay, so I've plugged in the USB expansion card. I'm gonna plug the mouse into that. Then I'm gonna plug the keyboard into the two USB ports that were working earlier. And uh, let's see what happens now. And it does. Now, the question is, will the mouse work? The mouse is powered on. The keyboard is also powered on. I really didn't think that we'd be finishing up the video now, I guess. Well, we're not finishing it up yet. I still don't know if it's actually fixed completely. Uh, so, gonna try to uh, power the keyboard via USB 3.0 ports now instead and see what happens, so. Yeah, boots up fine. So the culprit here is the mouse, I guess, which makes no sense to me. PC boots up fine as long as the mouse isn't plugged into the motherboard. It's instead plugged into the USB expansion card. All right, so I've plugged everything back in. The mouse is plugged into the expansion card. Everything else is plugged into the motherboard like usual. Nope, still continues on. Could it be other devices? All right, so by the looks of things, this is going to consist of a lot of trial and error. We're plugging in different USB devices and seeing what happens really. So these two work. Let's try to plug in uh, my microphone, the AT2020 here. So let's plug that into a USB 2.0 port and see if this boots up. Yes, four devices, we're doing good. Instead of plugging in an extra USB device, now I'm gonna try plug in uh, these three monitors into the back of the graphics card, just to see what happens, I guess. Monitors are plugged in, boots up fine. Graphics card isn't at fault here. All right, I've now plugged in my Stream Deck uh, directly into the USB port on the back of my motherboard, plugged into a USB 2.0 port. Let's see if this boots up. No, how the hell is my Stream Deck causing this to power cycle? The Stream Deck has been plugged into the PCIe expansion card instead. I've now plugged in the cable for the Razer headset. Let's see if this causes the PC to power cycle. No, the Razer headset is powered on and it did not cause the PC to power cycle. Now for the final test, and hopefully we can end the video here with everything being resolved. I've plugged in both of the keyboard wires, as it does have two wires, into two USB extension cables that plug into somewhere. They're extension cables and I have a lot of them, so uh, 
Yep. It's booting up. Everything is powered except one device. And that one device happens to be a USB powered LED strip from Minga that somehow causes the PC to power cycle. So uh, I'm just not gonna plug that one back in. Right, so I guess I'm gonna be ending the video here then. Everything seems to be fixed just for the sake of, you know, making sure that it is fixed. I'm gonna shut it down and you just boot it up one more time. For the final time, you were just working. You were just working. Why are you now power cycling? I want to end the video here. You, what do you mean? Which one of you is causing this? The headset power. Oh, this is so tedious at this point. I really don't understand this problem. Like, one second it works. Now it's power cycling again. Like, it just booted up with this configuration a second ago. And now it's power cycling. I unplugged my headset cable and now it boots up. What the hell? Okay, we have one device plugged into the PC. It, it boots up fine. Oh, I think this video is finally over. I don't really know what causes this problem. It could be a variety of reasons, I guess, why this is occurring. Perhaps like the power supply 5 volt rail, that's responsible for like, you know, USB power. Something's not quite right with that. Perhaps it's a motherboard problem. Maybe something's wrong with my BIOS configuration. I don't know, okay? Like, I really don't understand why this is happening and there's not much I can do, I guess, in terms of like diagnosing it hardware-wise. Uh, as I don't have a spare motherboard for that CPU socket, I don't have a spare CPU, I don't have spare RAM, and I don't have an extra power supply that I can just swap out. So, if I would have those things, I would gladly uh, swap out the power supply, swap out, you know, the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and narrow down the problem here to one component. But I don't have any spare components to actually, you know, replace the stuff in here. So I can't really do that. But now that it's fixed, I guess we can move on and uh, hope that in the next PC build, uh, this problem doesn't come back and haunt us again. Thank you everyone very much for submitting all your suggestions, all your solutions uh, to try to fix this problem for me. Thank you everyone who commented in the previous video. And if I ever have another like serious or strange PC issue in the future, I'm definitely going to do another one of these series in the future where we get the community involved and you guys can give me suggestions on how to fix a specific problem with the actual PC. So apart from that, thank you everyone for watching as always and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.